Hey everybody, it's Michael from Wahoo Comics here with another comic investing video where I share some investing tips and then show off some books at the end that demonstrate those tips in action. And so today, we're going to be talking about the importance of entry points and how to find good ones. So first of all, of course, well, what is an entry point? Well, an entry point is the price that an investor pays to acquire ownership or a stake in a certain investment. Whether it's comic books or real estate or a stock, it's basically the price that you pay. And finding a good entry point is usually considered to be the first step in making a successful investment because it allows the investor to maximize their profit when they go to sell that investment at what is called, of course, the exit point, while also minimizing their exposure to risk while they wait for that exit point. And so let's use an imaginary example to think about this. Uh, so let's imagine that there's some certain comic that you're targeting because you think a year from now you're going to be able to sell it for $100. Maybe it has the first appearance of some character in an upcoming Disney Plus set show. Let's say maybe Astonishing X-Men number 6, which contains the first appearance of Abigail Brand. And you think she's going to be in Secret Invasion, and you think, okay, it's going to go for $100 a year from now because of that. Well, the first step in making a successful investment in that comic book is finding one at a good entry point. So in other words, if you can find that book right now for $50, then when you go to sell it a year from now for $100, you will make a 100% return on your investment. But let's say instead of buying it for $50, you buy it for $60, not much more, just $10, doesn't seem like a big deal. Well, when you go to sell it a year from now, your return on investment would drop all the way down to 80%, which don't get me wrong, that's still a good investment, but it would be 20% less than if you were able to buy that book for $50. And it may not make a big difference with that one transaction, but if you're multiplying this over many transactions or big transactions, then 20% difference is a lot of money. Furthermore, not only does finding a good entry point help you to maximize your return on investment, but it also minimizes your risk. So let's say this astonishing X-Men number six that, I, that I'm confident is gonna sell for $100 next year. Let's, let's say instead, she ends up not being in the show. And so that book doesn't move at all. And so a year from now, you're stuck with it and you need to sell it and you're only able to get $50 for it. Well, if you only paid $50, you'd, you'd be bummed out. You know, you'd be like, oh, I thought I was gonna make some money on this. Uh, but at least you would break even, at least when it comes to money, you still would have lost time. And time is a very valuable resource, and I'll talk about that in another video sometime. But at least money-wise, you'll have broken even. But let's say you paid that $60 for it. Then you don't break even. You lose money. And in fact, you lose 17% on your investment. Now, Again, and with one transaction, not a big deal. You lost $10, but when you're spreading that out over many transactions or if it's on a big transaction, 17% is a lot of money. So if we want to be successful investors, then we have to figure out how to find good entry points. And so what are some tips for doing this, especially when it comes to comics? Well, I think the first step is if you are targeting a certain comic to buy, then you decide what is the maximum entry point that you're gonna have for that comic before you start hunting for it. So let's look, use Astonishing X-Men number six again. Uh, you decide before you even start looking for it that the maximum you're gonna pay is $50. And why is that important? Well, if you 
don't set a, a boundary beforehand. When you get into an auction or maybe you see it at your LCS, emotions start to creep in. You're like, Man, I really want to win it or, or that will look so cool. I've, I've got to have it now. And you end up making an irrational, emotional decision and overpaying for that comic book. And that brings me to the second point. Uh, once you've decided on your maximum entry point, uh, then you have to have patience. You've got to wait for the right book to come along at the right time. And don't get caught up in feeling like, man, I've got to have that Astonishing X-Men number six right now. Don't push it. Wait for the book to come to you. Deals are out there. Be patient in finding them. And certainly don't have FOMO. If everybody else starts talking about how good of an investment it is, stay away from it. Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time, you might have heard this. He said, when other people are greedy, be fearful. In other words, if somebody's saying, oh, you need to buy this book now, if something's on you know, CBSI top 10 list, it's time to run away from it as an investment. On the flip side, when people are fearful, when they're not looking to buy something, that's the time to really to really buy and, and, and be patient. And, and, and next up is study the rhythms of the market. Understand what factors cause comic books to go up and down in price over time. And of course, there's many factors, but one of the most reliable currently is the MCU. And so there's a pretty reliable pattern that between the trailer of a, of a movie and the release of that movie, whatever comic books are important to the characters in that movie are going to be at their peak value. But then a year from then, everybody's going to kind of move on to the next thing and those books are going to dip. And so if you've been watching my videos, you know that I really want a copy of Werewolf by Night number 32 because it contains the first appearance of one of my favorite characters, Moon Knight. But of course, there's a Moon Knight series going on right now that I'm really enjoying, and it's actually one my wife is watching with me, the first show that we've watched together. It's that good that even she likes it. Uh, and, and, you know, and so I'm watching it, the FOMO, you know, is going crazy, right? Oh, Moon Knight, he's so awesome. Just bite the bullet and buy that werewolf by night, number 32. But I've got to be disciplined, and I've got to be patient, and I've just got to say, hey, right now the market's not right. A year from now, when everybody's buying up that astonishing X-Men number six that I'm, that I'm going to sell, uh, that's when it's time to buy that werewolf by night number 32. Another tip related is, is flexibility. So being willing to pivot. You know, if I have a $50 entry point on that astonishing X-Men number six and I, and I just can't find the book at that price, well, I've got to be willing to pivot away, you know, to say, man, I, I really wanted that, but I just can't find it at the right entry point. And again, as I always say, this is only speaking in terms of investment. There's ro lots of reasons to buy comic books that aren't investment related. Maybe you just love Abigail Brand and you want that book. And if you're not looking at an investment yet, yeah, buy what you love. I'm talking about strictly from an investment perspective. You've got to be willing to pivot away and also pivot to something you weren't even looking for if you find an incredible deal on it. And so that happened to me recently. If you saw my last video, you know that I recently bought a copy of Avengers number four, which contains the first appearance, Silver Age appearance of Captain America. Now that wasn't a book I was even looking for, but I came across someone who was looking to sell his brother's collection and didn't want to put a lot of time into it. And so he offered me that book at a price way below market value. I'm gonna send it off to CGC, and at w the worst case scenario that I see for this book, it will easily have a market value of twice what I paid for it. Uh, but on the high end of what it could come back, it could be four times what I paid for it. And so even though I don't know if I'm gonna sell it, I think I'm probably gonna keep that book, but if I wanted to sell it, or if I get to a point where I need to sell it, I, I, I pivoted into it because it was just such a, a great deal. 
And so you've got to have flexibility if you want to maximize uh, your investments. And then thinking of that scenario, the last tip I have is, is you've really got to hunt for these deals. And if, if you, again, want the best entry points, I mean, you can go on eBay and you know pay full market value and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're really looking to maximize your return on investment, you have to be patient and you have to hunt. And you can find great deals on comics and really probably collectibles in general because one of the downsides of investing in them is that they are not nearly as liquid as like Amazon stock. So if I have a stock in Amazon and I'm ready to exit from that investment and I'm really ready to sell it, it's super easy to do so. I just go online, punch a few keys, and that stock is sold and I get full market value at, at that time. Comics, on the other hand, are a lot more of a hassle to exit from. You've got to take pictures of it, you've got to list it on eBay, and then you've got to wait days, weeks, months sometime uh, while continuing to maybe adjust the price you know, during that whole process. It's a big hassle. Somebody finally buys it, then you've got to package it up, send it off. Uh, hope the customer doesn't give you a lot of grief uh, for it. Says, "Oh, I thought it was going to be like this, or I didn't. You didn't show me this flaw in the pictures." You know, there's there's a big hassle when it comes to to exiting from comic books, but that means there can be some great entry points because there are a lot of people who don't want to deal with that hassle, and so they decide. And understandably, I don't, I don't, yeah, you know, I don't blame them if you're not really into comics, you know. Like, as an investment, you know, like someone like me, and if you're watching this video, probably you are, or you inherited a collection or you're selling it for your brother, things like that. I mean, I don't want to deal with the hassle. Uh, you know, I want to get something for these comic books. I know this Avengers 4, <laughs> I'm not going to sell it for a dollar, uh, but I don't need maximum value. I just want a decent value. Well, if you're looking for them and you find people in that situation, then you can find books way under market value and find great entry points and, and, and get a big discount on what you'd pay for those books on eBay. And so that's gonna bring me uh, to the books I'm gonna show you off today uh, because this is a great example of, of those tips in action. So especially this one, Marvel Spotlight number 32, uh, which is a book that I've been hunting for for months because it contains the first appearance of Spider-Woman. And of course, she's one of the larger Marvel characters that hasn't made an appearance in the MCU yet. And so I think it's inevitable. And again, I don't know, this is why I've got to minimize my risk. I don't, I don't know this is the case, but I think whether it's a year from now, three years from now, four years from now, uh, she will be in the MCU. And so I wanted to buy this book now before it grew a lot in value before it became much more unaffordable. And so I've been looking for a book and, and I had set an entry point of about a, of $140 is what I was looking to pay for a book that would be somewhere in a seven to eight grade raw. Uh, and so I've been looking around and I found a couple of sellers uh, who were looking to sell this book, but they were asking for about 150 and, you know, that's not that much more than 140 and it is a book I wanted. And, you know, and, and you do have to be flexible. You, know, you should re-examine your entry points, ask, you know, is this unreasonable? You know, an entry point for a book one day it may not be an entry point you can get it at. You know, it, it's, you know, uh, six months from now. Books, you know, climb and change in value, and so you've got to adjust your entry point. So I said, do I really want, and I decided, no, my entry point is 140. I'm not moving off of that. And if I can't find it for 140, then I'll just pivot into a book. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I came across someone who was looking to sell uh, books that he'd collected. They just, I think, been in his closet for the last few decades. And he, at first, listed them on online uh, for pretty much their market value, and so he had this for 150. And so I, well, you know, I guess I'm not going to get it. But then within a few days. I think he realized, oh man, yeah, I just want to be done with these books. This is a hassle. And so he all of a sudden dropped it where he had it listed down to $80. 
And when I saw that, my eyes got big and I said, man, I have got to jump on that right now uh, because it is in that seven to eight range. Uh, what I was looking for way below uh, the entry point that I was looking for. And, and so I, I picked it up. And even at market value, again, I think this is a fine book uh, to pick up. I think it's going to go up in value. Uh, so I don't think if you find it for 150 and you love that book, uh, you love this character, great time to buy it in my opinion. I don't know the future, but that's my opinion. But I do like this character, but I don't love her. And so I was fine not having this book, even though I wanted it. Um, but the right entry point did come along. Uh, and it came along and I had patience and I found it. And I found a few other uh, books from this seller also, again, a great entry point. So a Star Wars <laughs> number one. And this is actually my sixth copy of this book. So it wasn't one that I was looking for, but the entry point he put it at was just too low. Uh, and I felt like, okay, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna send off to CGC. It's not as nice as my other uh, Star Wars that I have. Um, so this is one that I'm planning to get back and then to sell. And I think what I'm able to be able to sell it for will pretty much help me break even. So even if I end up deciding to keep the Marvel Spotlight 32 and not sell it, it's you know, uh, I'll still end up yeah, basically breaking even. And that's like a lot of collectors, that's kind of my goal let the hobby fund itself and to kind of break even at the end. And so I'm really happy to have this book. Still a really nice copy, uh, uh, probably between an eight and a nine. All right, and then the seller also had some good deals on some books that, again, I wasn't looking for, and these are just for my personal collection. Uh, they're mostly uh, run fillers, but there's some Silver Age run fillers. Uh, so and these are all in for their age, great condition, and they were at a great price. Fantastic Four, 81. Always love these early Fantastic Four covers, 82. And then the one that I really like, because if you watch my videos, you know I collect Doctor Doom covers, 84. Super happy to have these, and these will just be in my collection. Uh, but he also threw in uh, a couple of books, uh, Fantastic Four, 211, which contains the first appearance of Terex. And I guess maybe, yeah, I think I've shown this book off before, but I'll just name this as my sleeper of the week uh, because it's still, you know, you can probably find this pretty cheap. I've found this pretty cheap many times this year. I've, I think this is my third copy of uh, this book, and obviously he just threw it in uh, for me. Uh, but I think anything kind of Galactus Silver Surfer related is good to consider investing in right now because I do think at some point they will show up. And then that brings me to another book he threw in. Thor 226, which contains this cool cover of Galactus. Another book, if you can find cheap, you need to pick up. And then one other book that I'm excited that I got from him, Marvel Premiere number 19, which contains the first appearance of Colleen Wing, uh, who was one of the daughters of the dragon. And if you watch the Netflix Disney shows, uh, Marvel shows, you know that she was in Iron Fist and then the, uh, the Defenders. And those shows have recently been ported over to Disney Plus, and yeah, at least some of those characters are going to be in the MCU. And if Colleen Wing shows up again, whether it's the same actress or not, I think the actress said that she's done, but they might recast her. Uh, this book will uh, you know, jump in value. But again, I got such a, a great entry point on this that even if she doesn't show up. If I ever need to exit from this book, which this is another one that I'm planning to just to have in my personal collection. I don't have it. I like that character. And I got it at such a great point that it's not, yeah, it's not a lot of the resources that I put into it. But let's say I, I do need the money and so I have to sell it. Well, yeah, the entry point was so great uh, that uh, I'll make a, a return on uh, what I bought it for. So uh, that brings me to my question of the week. Curious, what is a book that you got at a great entry point? Uh, one that you're really excited about, man, I found a good deal and you were glad you were patient on. Uh, what's one of your best entry point stories? Uh, or secondly, uh, what is a book that you're targeting uh, right now? And, uh, and what is your entry point on it? Let me know. All right. Well, thanks for watching the video. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, it'd be great if you consider doing so. We're marching towards 300 subscribers. 
uh, we just passed 225 and so it uh, obviously love if you're part of that journey uh, and uh, of course like the video comment all those things uh, thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video I hope making it and hope it was helpful for you